and welcome to the last lecture for this week. This week um, we've talked about several things. We talked about our potential energy diagrams and how those show us the energy of the reactants and the products compared to each other. And this time we're going to talk about what's called spontaneity. So spontaneous is the word that this sounds like and that's because spontaneity is about spontaneous reactions. Spontaneous chemical reactions uh, proceed on their own once they have been started. Now again they do need a little help to get over that activation energy hump but once they get started a spontaneous reaction is one that continues to occur um, on its own under specific conditions. Now, what are those conditions? Well, there's two things that you have to look at. You have to look at enthalpy, which is what we've been talking about earlier in this unit. So we're looking at delta H, right? And then now we're also going to add to it the other thing, which is entropy. Entropy is, change in entropy is delta S. So think about uh, delta H, which is enthalpy, which has to do with heat of the reaction and delta S, which is entropy, which has to do with its spontaneity. Spontaneity, there we go. So remember that energy is the, uh, I'm sorry, enthalpy is the energy content of the system. And what we know is that uh, nature favors reactions that actually undergo a decrease in enthalpy. Okay. Enthalpy, we measured it and we graphed it on a potential energy diagram, right? So generally systems are going to want to go from a high level to a low level of energy. So what does that mean? We're just kind of reviewing enthalpy here. That means that exothermic reactions are more likely to be spontaneous. So I'm just going to review here for you, right? This is our potential energy diagram. Our reactants are high, our products are low, and once we get over the hump, right, we have gone from a high energy to a low energy. That is meeting the requirement of enthalpy for a spontaneous reaction. And it's releasing energy, which can then go back in to help the next set of reactants get over the hump, right? So most exothermic reactions are likely to be spontaneous. And then the flip of that would be that most endothermic reactions are more likely to be non-spontaneous. Again, that's because in order to get an endothermic reaction, you have to get over that activation energy hump, but you have to have a constant influx of energy to continually raise your reactants up to the product level. So this is actually not the favored, that's what we say in chemistry, it's not favored, it's not the easy way, right? It's not the easy route. So we've just added in a new word, which is entropy. Enthalpy we've been doing for a few days. So entropy, this is the new thing for today that goes with spontaneity. Entropy is a measure of disorder of a system or randomness of a system. Well, nature actually favors reactions that undergo an increase in entropy. So an increase in entropy would be positive, right, going up. So an increase in entropy. So they favor things becoming more disordered as the reaction goes. And this is a common example that you will see. You know, if you were to take a load of bricks off of the back of a truck, what kind of pile would you most likely produce if you just dumped them, right? This one. This is the natural way that they would probably fall. They're not going to fall in a nice, neat stack. That's not how nature works. This is how man works. We plan cities and we plan our homes to be nice and orderly, but the natural state of things is much more disordered. So systems always tend towards disorder. And the higher the disorder, the higher the randomness, the higher the entropy. And so there's a lot going on here. It's a really cool idea. So again, the symbol is S. And if it is positive, 
If the change in entropy is positive, that means that it has become more disordered and random. If it is negative, it means that it has become less disordered or more orderly. Less disordered. Okay, so you have to think about it in terms of molecules, of course, since we're in chemistry, not in terms of bricks. But how are you going to tell then if it's more or less disordered on a molecule or an atom level? Well, there's a couple of things that we look at. We look at the phases of the different uh, compounds in our chemical reaction. So this should make sense based on what we learned way long time ago at the beginning of the year, right? If you have something like a gas, gases are moving around very fast, so they have a lot of randomness, they have a lot of disorder, and they have a high entropy. As you bring those molecules to get of gas slower and slower together into liquid form. Liquids are still moving around, but they are more ordered than a gas. And by the time you get them here to a solid, right, solids have low order, low entropy, low randomness. So we're going to look at the phases. So um, on your notes, you can write it um, kind of like, let's see, a solid, and then maybe I would put low entropy right, to a liquid right, and then to a gas which has oops, the most entropy. So we can look at the phases that are indicated on our chemical reaction and we can see if one side has a solid and the other side has a gas we know that it will want to um, naturally go towards the direction of the gas because that's more disordered. Now what if everything has gases in them? Well then what you do is you look for the side of the chemical equation that has a higher number of gas molecules. So here I've got two H2 molecules and one O2 molecule. So I have three molecules on the side on the left and over here I have only two water molecules. This side has two. So what I know is that it will favor this direction. Right? That's the direction of entropy. So this particular reaction right, has a decrease in entropy the way it's written because it becomes more ordered. I go from three to two. Nature would tend to want it to go this way. And then the last thing we look for is temperature. Sometimes there's temperature information given. An increase in temperature causes the molecules to move more, and if they move more, then they have more motion, and more motion means more randomness, and more randomness means more entropy. So when we're looking to determine what has more entropy, again, we're not doing calculations, really. We're looking for the clues. We're looking for the phases. We're looking for if everything is gas, we're looking for which side has more or less gas to know if entropy is increasing or decreasing. And if there's temperature information, we can consider the temperature of the system and know that the hotter it is, the more the molecules are moving, so the more random and disordered they will be. Now, just one more slide here of just content to kind of pull these two things together. Enthalpy which was delta H, change in enthalpy. Entropy, which is S. Enthalpy, right, is the total heat content in the system. It's what's locked up in the bonds. Entropy, right, is the disorder in the system. So one is disorder, one is heat content. The heat content comes from the energy stored or released when bonds are broken or made. Disorder has to do with molecule motion. Okay, so more motion means more disorder and nature favors disorder. 
So we've just kind of circled around and tied together the energy information with the entropy information. Now, we're not going to do calculations with these either. We'll save that. That's more of an AP thing first year. We're just learning about the concepts and learning how to kind of put these ideas together. So what you will need to do now is, again, go to Google Classroom and you will complete the items from CK12 that have the number two next to them. And remember that you are aiming for 10 correct and a measure of proficient. If you get 10 correct, but you are not proficient, you need to continue to um, try to practice and get up to that proficient level or ask me to reset it for you if you just can't get there. Okay, so number two, and then you will have your homework slash classwork, depending on where you are in this um, situation up here, you will have, there will be one more that will bring all of these ideas together, just like we had last week. So there will be one more, I don't have it up yet, but to pull, well, maybe I do, depends on when you watch this, one more assignment to pull all the ideas together. So that will be your um, number three assignment. So again, it looks like more in Google Classroom, but these are pretty um, straightforward, not too difficult things, and number three will pull everything together for us. So this is the lecture. It's pretty short this week. I told you we had an easy two weeks so that we could um, all kind of get a breather and get caught up. So make sure that you take care of these and you stay um, on task. And that way, when we start the next week, you will be completely caught up and enjoying your weekend.